All right, guys, what is going on and welcome to a new type of video. So challenge runs are a huge thing in the community, but I've never tried one before because honestly, I just didn't think I was a good enough Pokemon player to beat a challenge like this. But with quarantine being a thing, it gave me some extra time. So I decided to go ahead and tackle one of these challenge runs myself. So the popular trend is to pick a rather weak Pokemon and to solo run the game with that. So for this video, I decided to go with our boy Yanma. And today we're going to be answering the question if you can beat Pokemon Fire Red with only a Yanma and zero deaths in the process. This video has been in the works for so long, so I really hope you guys enjoy it. And if you do, do not forget to drop a like down below and also to leave a comment letting me know what other challenge runs you'd like to see on the channel. But with all that being said, let's hop right into this solo Yanma, no deaths, let's go. So of course I start off my run by naming myself Supra and then naming my rival. I thought Patters was a good fit for this run just because I did the Master Mode Versus with him, so shout out to Pat, he's the rival. Of course I strategically get the potion that's in the PC because that's what a good Pokemon player would do in this position. After getting walked back to the lab by Professor Oak, it was finally time to choose our first Pokemon. And by first Pokemon, I mean Yanma. I took the liberty upon myself to make all of the starters Yanma just for fun. I know some people when they do a run like this, they gen in the Pokemon, but no, I just made all of them Yanma. Honestly, I was stuck at this nicknaming screen for like 10 minutes. I seriously had no idea what to name this Pokemon. Like I felt obligated to name it something good or at least funny because I don't know, we're solo running the game with it. And finally, after minutes of pondering, I decided to go with the name Yan Milf. It's not my proudest nickname, I will admit, but you know what, it gets the job done. As I mentioned, we are trying to do this run with absolutely no death. So this first rival battle was honestly a little bit scary, but thankfully Yanma was able to pull through and actually win with ease. Before heading to Viridian City, I decided to grind up a few levels just to get to level seven, so everything would be a little less scary. And after returning the parcel to Professor Oak and getting the Pokedex in return, it was time to set out to Viridian Forest. Now going into this challenge, I knew I was going to be spending a lot of time in Viridian Forest, solely for the fact that I need to grind up so I can beat Brock. I'm gonna tell you guys straight up, Brock was easily one of the toughest trainers in this entire challenge, because I knew I had to grind all the way up to level 17, so I would finally get Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom was pretty much my only chance of beating Brock. That and Double Team. I mean, Yanma has pretty piss poor defense stats, so there's no chance I could live any rock move from Onyx or Geodude. So after I finally reached level 17 and learned Sonic Boom, I just went straight into the gym. I didn't even test my strategy on the trainer inside the gym, I just went straight to Brock. As I mentioned, my plan for this battle was to just pretty much spam double team and then just go for Sonic Booms from there on out. And after I finally reached plus six evasiveness, I knew there was only one thing I could do from here on out, and that was click Sonic Boom. And honestly, thank God Yanma has Sonic Boom in its early on moveset, because this helped me out so, so much. Honestly, I thought I was pretty set to win this match, and that was when I was completely caught off guard by this Onyx actually hitting Rock Tomb. I'm literally plus six, and Rock Tomb isn't a 100% accurate move. I don't know how we hit this. But thankfully, Yan Milf lives, he hangs on, and we're able to finish out the battle with another Sonic Boom, of course, after we potion up. But you know, we finished it. There we go. All right, so we got the boulder badge, and honestly, I'm so glad that fight went as good as it did. That could have just ended our run completely. We had to start all over, but that actually went really well. Hell yeah, Sonic Boom. After beating literally every trainer on Route 3 and all of the trainers inside of Mount Moon, we finally wound up at Cerulean City. So I knew I had two options as soon as I arrived in this town. We could either A, take on Misty right now, or B, go and see Bill, grind up a little bit on the trainers beforehand, and then take on Misty. I decided to go with the latter and make my way towards Bill's house. Also, something I forgot to mention is that during the rival fight, we actually got Hypnosis at level 23, which is a huge bonus to our moveset. Now, I know the accuracy of Hypnosis is really not that good, but paired with Yanma's ability being compound eyes, it actually hits pretty much all the time. After getting the SS ticket from Bill, we found ourselves at level 27, which I figured was good enough to take on Misty. I mean, her ace Pokemon Starmie is level 21, so I figured we could do it. And I was not proven wrong. I actually taught Thief to Yanma simply for this fight so we could hit it for super effective damage, and it just two shot the Starmie right off the bat, and that was great. So there we go, we are two batches down in this run, time to make our way to Vermilion City. I decided to go all out on the SSN and take on literally every single trainer, cause I figured the smallest amount of EXP matters the most in this run, we gotta get as much as possible, just so we won't lose, cause that's the whole goal. So, I took on every trainer, got cut, and it was time to take on Lieutenant Surge. 
I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I was terrified of this fight, and it's pretty obvious why. I mean, Yanma is weak to electric type Pokemon, or electric type moves rather. Anyways, I beat all the trainers in the gym rather easily. The only thing that was pretty annoying was I kept getting paralyzed by Pikachu's static ability, so I knew I had to keep that in mind during the gym battle. Voltorb went down super easy, as expected, and I thankfully didn't get paralyzed by Pikachu's static. I actually had a pretty set out strategy to fight this Raichu. I know that Lieutenant Surge has one full heal item that he can use, so after going for Hypnosis once, I clicked Hypnosis again, predicting that he would use that full heal, and of course, he did. So yeah, now we're pretty much in the best situation possible. Raichu is asleep because I thankfully didn't miss Hypnosis twice in a row. Look at that. The Raichu was pretty annoying, I'm not gonna lie, but after Lieutenant Surge used all of his healing items, I was able to take it down very easily. And there we have it, the Thunder Badge. And now we have to make our way to the worst part in any Pokemon game, being Rock Tunnel. I don't know what it is about Rock Tunnel, I just genuinely despise it. There's nothing I like about it. It really isn't that hard of a puzzle, but I just, I hate it. But thankfully on the route leading up to the Rock Tunnel, we can find the TM for Aerialist, which will be very, very useful in this run. I mean, the only flying type move that Yanma can learn outside of this is Wing Attack, and Aerial Ace is 100% accurate. So if you're picking up what I'm saying, this is pretty much the best flying type move that we have access to throughout this entire run. Honestly, Rock Tunnel really wasn't that bad. I was just thinking of it as grinding, and we exited Rock Tunnel at level 38. Now from Lavender Town, we need to make our way west through Route 8 to go to Celadon City. At this point in the game, I got pretty cocky with Erica's gym, and I just ran in there and massacred everyone. I mean, we're bug and flying type, really what is Erica going to do? I just wanted my W, and that's what I did. And I'm really not exaggerating, Erica's battle was a complete massacre. I walked into that battle, clicked Aerial Ace three times, and I killed all of her three Pokemon. After receiving the fourth badge, it was time to make my way to the game corner so we could clear out all the Team Rocket stuff there. All of the Team Rocket grunts in the game corner started to get me scared because most of them had ground and rock type Pokemon. And with my current moveset on Yanma, I had almost no chance taking on some of these ground and rock type Pokemon, like Giovanni's Rhyhorn or Sandslash. I know Giovanni doesn't have a Sandslash, I'm just saying in general. So I decided to go into my TM pouch and teach Erica's TM a Giga Drain to Yanmilf. And honestly, this move became such an asset throughout the run, this was the answer to Rock-type Pokemon that I needed. After teaching Giga Drain, Giovanni's Pokemon stood absolutely no chance. Rhyhorn went down super easy, Onix went down super easy, Kangaskhan actually stood a bit of a fight, Aerial Ace was able to handle that though, and yeah, there we go, we got our Silph Scope. Now with the Silph Scope, of course it's time to go back to Lavender Town and head up in the Pokemon Tower to see what's going on. Of course, I capitalized on the opportunity and fought every single trainer in this tower just because I knew I needed to grind. At this point in the game, the gym leader's Pokemon are going to be a lot higher level, especially Koga, so I knew I had to prepare. So I was thinking in my head where some higher level trainers would be that I could fight and take on to try and get some more experience, and I realized I hadn't taken on the fighting dojo yet. Of course, I wouldn't actually choose one of the Pokemon they offer you at the end, I would just take all the trainer's experience and then dip. And that's exactly what I did, so after that, we head to Sylphco. Got to Sylphco, went to floor 5, got the card key, cleared out the rest of it, and now I knew it was time to take on my rival. Now this fight I was actually really scared for, simply because not only are the rival's Pokemon very high leveled, but he's also got a Pidgeot and a Blastoise, Alakazam, like it's, it's crazy, so I knew this was gonna be a hard fight. The battle actually went pretty well though, none of the Pokemon gave me too much of a problem, Alakazam was a bit annoying just cause Future Sight, but we were able to get the job done, thankfully. However, it really wasn't good enough. I feel like we should be winning by a lot more if we want a chance at completing a run with zero deaths. So I decided to just leave Silphco and we were gonna grind up a bit more before we take on Giovanni. My strategy for Giovanni before doesn't fully work now because he does have a Nido Queen, which makes it a lot more scary. Like I can't just Giga Drain that, so I definitely needed to level up a little bit more. So I basically just decided, screw it, let's go do something else, and I went straight to Fuchsia City. I knew if I went to Fuchsia City, we could take on all of the trainers on the way there on the cycling road, but I could also take on all of the trainers to the east. So yeah, that was the plan. After grinding up on some of the trainers, I decided to make my way to the Safari Zone so we could get the Gold Teeth as well as Surf. And after getting Surf and Strength, we found ourselves at level 57, which I thought was comfortable enough to take on Giovanni. So I went back to Silphco, took on Giovanni, won, and got my Master Ball. After that, I decided it would probably be the most optimal to take on Sabrina right now, considering we are in Saffron City, so I went right into her gym. And because of our level, we literally just one-shot every single one of Sabrina's Pokemon. 
Pokemon. After beating Sabrina, I had the confidence to just go straight into Koga's gym and take him on, so I did that. And thank god we had Psychic and Aerial Ace. Honestly, Psychic was needed for Pokemon like Weezing, but Aerial Ace was even more needed for Muck because it goes for Minimize like every turn. With both those moves, we were pretty much able to sweep Koga's team, so there we go, we are six badges down. And after beating Koga, I decided to waste no time and just make my way straight to Cinnabar Island. At this point in the game, we're pretty overleveled compared to most of the trainers we're going to be fighting, so I decided we should just go for it. Honestly, I hate the Pokemon Mansion, so I just decided to clear out everything as fast as possible just so I could leave. And after that, I decided to just do a little bit more training so we don't get absolutely destroyed by Blaine. This is definitely the scariest gym leader in this entire run, so I cannot afford to lose. After finally reaching level 68, I thought that that was an appropriate level to take on Blaine and still have it be a challenge, so I decided to just go balls to the wall and do it. I didn't think I could win this fight without some sort of gimmick, so my strategy going in was to buy a bunch of X specials, use Hypnosis on the Growlithe, and just set up while we can. Honestly, the strategy worked really well. Once we put the Growlithe to sleep, we were able to use X specials like five times on it, and then I just swept the rest of Blaine's team from there. I think this is probably the only way I could have beaten Blaine, so I'm glad the strategy worked and I'm glad we were able to do it. So now with one of the hardest gym leaders in this run out of the way, it was time to make our way to the Sevi Islands with Bill. The events of the Sevi Islands all went very smooth, I saved LaSalle from the Hypno, returned the meteorite to LaSalle's dad, and then we were on our way. I did try to take on every trainer on the Sevi Islands, or at least one, two, and three island because I figured we would need the experience, and after that, we found ourselves at level 72. With all that training out of the way, I decided that once we got back to Cinnabar Island, we should just go straight to Viridian City and try to get our 8th gym badge. Now my idea for this final Giovanni fight was just to Giga Drain everything that Giga Drain is super effective against, and then go for Psychic against Nidoqueen and Nidoking. And that was definitely more than enough, Psychic absolutely destroyed Nidoqueen and Nidoking, and there we go, we got our 8th gym badge. So of course, with all 8 gym badges out of the way, there's only one more thing to do, and that's make our way to Victory Road. The great thing about Victory Road was that most of the trainers had very high level Pokemon, meaning we would get good EXP from beating them. So I'm sure you know what I'm gonna say, but I took on all of the trainers in Victory Road just to get that EXP needed before taking on the Elite Four. And when we finally made it out of the Victory Road, we found ourselves at level 77. But honestly, that level did not seem high enough to me to take on all of the Elite Four and the Champion, so I decided to go back into Victory Road and grind up a bit. I decided to stop grinding at around level 85, and then I used our one rare candy in our bag to top us over to level 86. Level 86 compared to 77 made me way more comfortable to go into the Elite Four, so I decided to stock up on full restores and do it. So here we go, this was really the moment of truth. We had no deaths up until this point, I did not want to spoil the run at the literal end of it. So I knew I had to play smart if I wanted to win. So going into the Lorelei fight, I knew that I wanted to Hypnosis the Dugong at least once to try and get one X special in. I figured with one X special that should be enough for Aerial Ace or Giga Drain to just one shot the rest of her team. And I think that helped a lot. It made us able to one shot Dugong, Slowbro, and Cloyster. Unfortunately, we weren't able to one-shot Lorelei's Lapras, but thankfully we lived the Ice Beam that the Lapras went for, so we could just finish it off with another Giga Drain. And just like that, Lorelei went down and we beat the first Elite Four member. Now Bruno I was way less scared for, considering we do have Giga Drain for his Onyx, and we are a flying type, so Machamp was going to go down very easily. And it did, we just literally one-shot the Machamp. And not only did we one-shot the Machamp, but we also one-shot every single Pokemon on his team. So there we go, Bruno is down, now it is time for Agatha. Now honestly, I was really scared about this Agatha fight. I even contemplated teaching Shadow Ball before, just to hit Gengar for super effective damage. But I realized we already had Psychic, so that wasn't needed. I decided to go for the same strategy of using Hypnosis, then setting up with X specials, and just trying to sweep the rest of Agatha's team. And once again, one X special was all I needed to just absolutely dismantle the rest of her team. And just like that, we have three out of the four Elite Four members down. Now moving on to Lance, I had no idea how this fight was going to go. I had no super effective moves for his Pokemon, and I know he has an Aerodactyl. So already I was really scared. And after potioning up and using some ethers, I decided to just jump right in. After seeing how much a minus one Aerial Ace did, I figured, screw this, let's just do the same strategy, set up, and then just hope for the best. One X special was not enough to help one-shot the Dragonites, but thankfully, he goes for Safeguard instead of any attacking move, so that's just amazing. But thankfully, one X special was enough to take on the Aerodactyl in just one shot. The rest of Lance's Dragonairs went down with ease, and with that we have beat the entire Elite Four and it's time to take on the Champion. 
Guys, at this point in the game, I was so nervous. I couldn't believe it. We had gotten this far with zero deaths. I did not want to have my first death at the champion fight. I decided to go with that same strategy we used on our rival in Sylphco, just go for Hypnosis and try to set up and sweep. Now that I think about it, I've pretty much been using that strategy since Blaine. And thankfully, after not missing Hypnosis, the Pidgeot's asleep and it's time to set up. After using three X specials, I thought it was a good time to just go ahead and start attacking. And please, make no mistake, even though I was plus three on all of his Pokemon, I was still really scared for this fight. There was a chance I could miss the Pidgeot and use Sand Attack before, so I didn't know what was gonna happen. But thankfully, I do hit the Giga Drain on Rhydon, the one Pokemon who could potentially one-shot me, so that was amazing. I figured the champion's Arcanine could probably one-shot me too, that's why I decided to go for Hypnosis right on turn one as soon as it came out. And this was definitely a gamble. Thank God we have the Compound Eyes ability, or I'm sure we would have missed this considering we were minus one from the Sand Attack. But after going for Psychic, it turns out I didn't even need to do that. It was just a clean one-shot anyways, so that's amazing. The Alakazam actually put me in a really annoying position because all of my moves don't really do anything to Alakazam barring Aerial Ace, and every single time I would go for Aerial Ace, he would just use Recover. And that combined with the Reflect Alakazam put up, it's just, it was so annoying. But after many turns, we were able to take down the Alakazam, and now it's time for Executor. Executor went down rather easy with Aerial Ace, and now it was the last Pokemon of the Champions team. This Blastoise right here decides whether or not we beat this run with zero deaths or not. And all I have to say is, thankfully, we had Giga Drain. And there you have it, we did it. We beat Pokemon Fire Red with only a Yanma and had zero deaths the entire run. Honestly guys, this challenge was really, really fun. It's something I've never done, like solo ran a game and tried to never die. I think one of the reasons I've never done a challenge run like this in the past is honestly just because I didn't think I could win. So this was actually a really big moment for me. I seriously didn't think I could win this challenge. So yeah, there you have it. Pokemon Fire Red beaten only with a Yanma and zero deaths in the process. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by leaving a like down below as well as letting me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to leave a comment letting me know what challenge you would like to see next. I'm definitely down to do more of these. Let me know what game you want to see, as well as what Pokemon you want me to solo run with. No items, no deaths. Let me know all in the comments down below. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys next time.